You said we haven't heard much about financial risks in China for quite a while. Uh, this is a big achievement, I consider, as we keep hearing about bad news from other parts of the world, like the U.S. government debt ceiling or South Korea's personal debt problems, etc. So how have the Chinese financial regulators managed to safeguard the country's financial system in recent years? Yes, frankly speaking, when we're talking about the uh, risk uh, existence at the moment, we have to be aware that even we haven't heard any more words about the risk or hearing less about the risk, doesn't mean that, that there's no risk at the moment because we never had the ri zero risk at the moment because risky or risk situations existing is very normal, especially for today's development, also like in China, the developing countries. We have some problems and uh, we are facing new challenges. That's why we have risks. But China is the one of the best countries who have put all the risk under tough control and effective control. We have already adopted many major policies. The first major policy that is very famous known to the whole world, that is the bottom line concept. What the meaning of the bottom line concept? That means all the financial institutions, when they are doing financial activities, they have to consider where is the red line. So we should not allow all this uh, risky that happened to the entrepreneur and enterprises. So bottom line concept is very essential and very effective for China's development. And secondly, the major policy for China's financial development is keeping balance. When we are talking about the output, that is spending, we have to see what we have income, what we have got to return. Keep these two points in the good balancing, then the risk is very less, is very positive. So that's why China is very safe, very healthy, and very smooth in the financial control, especially by the financial control, is better control the risks as we always talking about uh, pay more attention to financial risks. This is the first world and also everlasting risk in control in China. This is the, also one of the major reasons that the China's financial market is quite stable here. Mm. Authorities have been encouraging banks to support small companies in China, but those small companies do not have sufficient assets as collateral and their risk control levels vary a lot. What should banks do to increase more support to the real economy and at the same time manage its bad loan ratio? This is a very uh, interesting um, question. We know that in the past 10 years or 20 years, China's government has tried best to keep a, a good solution to solve the problem with the small, medium-sized companies because they are really facing the uh, financing pressure. And also, one, one of the key problems for these small companies, as you mentioned, that they don't have enough asset to mortgage the loans they will receive from the institution. But the, from the banking regulation, all the bankers, when, we, when we, they are, uh, give out all these loans and the credits to the uh, lenders and the rent, they have to need some asset as a mortgage. So this is a, really a contradiction. But some new policies are adopted that to facilitate to help the small companies that to get the loans with an easy way. For instance, we have the personal credit record and also we can use all these uh, uh, project opportunities to avoid any possible uh, risks. Because for some companies, uh, they have to avoid some loans activities without any actual, the real project behind it. This is something what we have to avoid. So when the banking are sure that all these companies, they have real, com real activities, real doing business, and then they can ensure to all this credit and also loans to the uh, entrepreneur. So by doing so that we can avoid and reduce the bad debt ratio. On the other side, all these three levels of the alarm system in the institution, for the middle level, branch level, and sub-branch level. All these three levels, they have supervision and the monitoring system to keep eyes on all these behaviors and the business activities 
even with these uh, entrepreneurs who lend the money, who borrow the money from the bankers, the banker will see and will know what they are doing with these loans. So to avoid the misuse of these loans. So this is a very effective policy. Right. It's quite remarkable that China has completely banned cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin, both for trading and payment in the country. It's also banned P2P finance. Uh, what are your views on such decisive uh, um, policy moves? Will the authorities encourage uh, innovation in the fintech sector still? I think this is a decision is a very not only decisive but a very important. Also, uh, keep the real problem that uh, that China should avoid. <coughs> you know, for China's economy, especially for the financial system, we have to be aware to avoid the two persons, two kinds of person. One is opportunist, the second is the speculator. Because the big currency is a virtual currency that they use for only for those speculators, not for normal people. So when we're talking new so fintech innovation, we have to know that for whom, for what. If we understand that for whom, if they are doing this for the people and for the people's economy in the for the uh, living standard uh, upgrading that is good uh, decision move but some countries they are doing it for capitalists for a small group of people's interests and they a second for what reason it's not only for the social quality for the social equality so this is the big challenge for the regulators to avoid such problems so when we are talking about this uh, bit point of virtual currencies uh, this is uh, with the name, with the beautiful cap of innovation, but it really has nothing to the to the benefits of the people. So we have to be aware. All this fintech innovation must serve the people, serve the nation, serve the real economy. Then that is okay. We give the green light. Thank you so much for your insights. That's Mr. Liu Zhiqing for us. Ocean Global.